Welcome back to the Crypto Ball channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is still holding above this important level on the price chart as this short-term bearish divergence is potentially coming to an end. But right now, we're seeing the US stock market in the pre-market having a bit of a drop right now, which could put some downwards pressure on Bitcoin, while Ethereum is still rejecting from this critical area of resistance and now playing out this short-term head and shoulders pattern, which is a bearish pattern. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in the video, so definitely watch to the end. First of all, just before we take a look at the Bitcoin charts today, we need to talk about the news today because in Bitcoin news today, we saw just yesterday a net outflow from the spot Bitcoin ETFs, which is some bad news, at least in the short term, because obviously in the beginning of the week, we were seeing huge net inflows, which is essentially buying pressure coming into the Bitcoin ETFs to buy up Bitcoin. And so first of all, on Monday, we saw a net inflow of over 1.1 billion US dollars. On Tuesday, we saw a net inflow of 800 million. On Wednesday, we saw a net inflow of 500 million. So obviously the inflows were slowing down, but they were still looking pretty good up until Wednesday. And then and on Thursday, just yesterday, we saw a net outflow of 400 million US dollars, which basically means money is now leaving the Bitcoin ETFs, essentially selling Bitcoin, at least just on Thursday. And so obviously, if this is just a one-off, it's not that big of a deal. But if this becomes more of a trend, if we continue to see more net outflows like this each and every weekday when the Bitcoin ETFs are trading, then obviously that is some bad news for Bitcoin and could potentially result in some selling pressure. So I will keep you up to date on these Bitcoin ETFs. So make sure you subscribe subscribe to this channel with notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on any of these important update videos. But with that being said, taking a look at the Bitcoin charts today on the weekly time frame, things are still looking really bullish right now. We're still due to see a major bull run potentially over the next few months, maybe over the next one year approximately based on these previous signals. And if we're looking at this weekly Bitcoin chart right now, we're still seeing a lot of bullish momentum on the larger time frames here in the weekly Bitcoin MACD. And the last time this happened was roughly around a year ago, just at the beginning stages of a major bull run that lasted over the next half a year, give or take, at least over the next few months. And so, as I always say, despite what happens in the short term on smaller time frames, things are still looking really bullish right now when we're zooming out, looking at the bigger picture. So remember, on small time frames, it's very normal to see little pullbacks and things like that here and there. That's very normal to see even during a larger bull run when we're zooming out. And with that being said, if we're taking a look at the US stock market, on the daily time frame, this is the QQQ, which is basically the NASDAQ, so the tech stocks in the US stock market. And right now, at the time of recording this video, we're currently in the pre market and we're currently seeing a bit of a drop off in the pre market today in the US stock market. And over the last few days, we have seen a slight little pullback as well from the recent high. And obviously, this is a crypto channel, so a lot of you might be wondering why am I talking about the stock market? And well, because usually, not always, but usually, crypto and Bitcoin follows similar price action to what stocks are doing. So for example, around a week ago, give or take, when stocks were pumping after that election, obviously we also saw a huge pump across the crypto market. And then just over the last couple of days, stocks have started to cool off a little bit. And right now we're starting to see a bit of a short-term cool off for Bitcoin and crypto. So keep in mind, right now we are seeing a bit of a pullback, at least in the short term for the stock market. So while this is happening, this could potentially put a bit of down downwards pressure on Bitcoin and crypto, at least in the short term. But once again, when we're zooming out, we are still in a larger bullish trend here in the stock market and also in the Bitcoin price. And if we're taking a look at this four day Bitcoin chart right now, the super trend indicator is still sitting in the green, indicating a larger bullish market. So nothing has changed on this chart right here over the last one day. So getting straight into this two day Bitcoin chart and over the last one day, nothing else has changed in the Bitcoin long positions on the Bitfinex exchange. So so in case you missed my last video here on the channel, I talked about how a lot of traders on the Bitfinex exchange have closed quite a lot of long positions over the last few days, over the last week, give or take. But especially just in the last few days, we've seen a lot of longs close on that exchange. But once again, since yesterday, this is basically traded sideways. So we don't have really any new updates over the last one day. So if you missed my last video, if you want to know more about this chart in particular, then check out my last video here on the channel to find out more about this chart. But with that being said, getting straight into this three-day Bitcoin chart, and at least as of recording this video, despite the current short-term pullback, basically a bit of a cool-off in the short term, at least 
least as of recording this video, we're still holding above this important Fibonacci extension, which is the 1618 Fibonacci extension, and that's sitting at approximately $89,000. So once again, at the time of recording this video, we're currently sitting right around that 89K level, slightly above that level. And while we're still holding above that level, this is good news here on the three-day time frame. And remember, we're talking about the candle closes here. So if we see a little candle wick to the downside, that's no big deal. But if, for example, we see a three-day candle close well below 89,000, then that would be a bit of a bearish signal, at least in the short term. But for now, while we're still holding above 89,000, especially in terms of the candle closes here, we still have that 2618 Fibonacci extension on this chart right here, sitting at around 113,000 as a major price target. But before 113,000, we also have this 1618 Fibonacci extension, which is based on the linear setting. So it's the same Fibonacci extension, but based on a different scale, different settings. And this is sitting at around 94 to 95,000. So we could find a bit of resistance at around around 94K, for example, or close to 95K. And so far, we have found resistance very close to 94K at around 93,500. So around that area, we do have some resistance, which in case you're new to all of this, that basically means the price is going to struggle to go beyond that level, at least initially. Sometimes it might take one or two attempts before eventually breaking out. So we have to be aware of that level once again at around 94 to 95,000. And then we can start targeting beyond $100,000 after we break out above around 94 to 95,000. And with that being said, if we're zooming much further into the short term, looking at the two hour Bitcoin chart, we can see that this bearish divergence right here pretty much perfectly played out over the last one to two days, just in the short term, because usually a bearish divergence plays out in the form of either a short term pullback or at least just some choppy sideways price action. So basically a bit of a break or a slowdown from the larger bullish trend. So overall, when we're zooming out, looking at the bigger picture, things are still looking very bullish. We're still within a larger bull market just in the short term. Zooming into the smaller time frames, we're seeing a bit of a break at the moment from that bull market just in the short term before potentially we resume the bull market later on. And usually when we're talking about a bearish divergence on the two hour chart, it usually lasts for a couple of days or so before it basically starts losing relevance. And that's potentially what's happening right now. We're starting to see potentially the two hour Bitcoin RSI start to bottom out. And if we start to see more of a trend reversal in this RSI forming higher lows and higher highs, that would be a sign of potentially this bearish divergence coming to an end. And if we simply look at the length of time that this bearish divergence has played out, it's already very close to the length of time that this previous short-term bearish divergence played out roughly around a week ago, give or take, because obviously back then we saw basically a sideways consolidation, so a slowdown from all of the bullish momentum for just a couple of days in the short term, and then eventually continued the bull market later on. So this is a likely scenario moving forward. Once again, maybe for another day, just in the short term, we're seeing a bit of a slowdown, especially while stocks are pulling back. We could see a little bit of selling pressure while we're seeing these outflows from the Bitcoin ETF but zooming out, looking at the bigger picture, we're still in a larger bull market. And so personally, I view these potential little pullbacks here during a bull market as buying opportunities, not financial advice. This is just what I'm looking at. And personally, in case you're wondering, I am still long on the price of Bitcoin trading this bull market to the upside. And I entered that position quite a while ago at much lower prices, which I actually shared here on the channel back then. And if you also want to take trades just like that for yourself to maximize your profits in crypto during this bull run, personally, I take most of my trades and that trade right there over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to to buy a bit down below this video in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link below this video to make your Bybit account and deposit on that account, then you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use that link down below this video. And also if you use that link, it'll take you to this page right here, which is a 500 USDT position airdrop. So basically a free $500 trade as your first trader over on Bybit, but that's only available if you actually use the link below this video to make your Bybit account and deposit on that account. So if you're going to be trading crypto anyway, you might as well check this out. Once again, first link down below this video. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, there's also Bitinex, which is another crypto exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitinex, which means if you're in the US or the UK, for example, or another country where you might
you might not be able to access Bybit, you can access Bitonex. So I'll also leave a link to Bitonex below this video. And if you use that link, you can get up to a 5.5K deposit bonus. And only if you use that link, you can get an exclusive 10% discount on all trading fees on the Bitonex exchange forever. But that's only if you use the link below this video to make your Bitonex account. And so as another option out there, other than Bybit, one that you can access from the US once again, there's Bitonex links down below if you want to claim those extra bonuses. But with that being said, taking a look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, and right now we still have a lot of liquidity to the upside, mainly starting at around 93,500 and going up towards around 96,500. So in that area, we have a lot of liquidity, which basically means a lot of short positions would get liquidated. They would get wiped out of the market if the price crosses above that region. So basically, if we can break out above around 94,000, then we're looking at another potential short squeeze that will likely take the price up towards around 98, possibly 99, so close to 100,000. And then right at around that 100K level, we have more liquidity and also more liquidity at around 102 to 103,000. And as for liquidity to the downside, we have a small amount of liquidity to the downside building at around 85,000, give or take. But with that being said, we still technically have more liquidity to the upside compared to what we have to the downside, at least in the immediate short term here, close to the price. And if we're taking a look at Ethereum on the weekly time frame right now, the price of ETH, despite the short-term pullback, is technically still showing bullish price structure here on the larger time frames, seeing a massive bounce from this ascending line of support, which is still sitting at around 2.4K. So not much has changed on the larger time frames once again, despite a short-term pullback. And if we're taking a look at this three-day time frame, of course, like I said in my last video, we are finding resistance around this Fibonacci level, sitting at around 3. 2k approximately so for now 3.2k is major resistance that we need to break out above with an actual candle close on the three-day time frame above 3.2k to confirm that breakout and if that happens our next resistance is close to three and a half thousand and above that we should find some decent resistance at around 3.9k to 4k based on these previous highs and as for support we should find massive support at around 2.8k but before that area on the three-day time frame of course we have other short-term levels of support. And if we're taking a look at the daily time frame, obviously we can see right now the price of ETH is finding some support at close to $3,000, which I mentioned over the last few days. We do have some short-term support at close to $3,000 approximately. So right now that is the support to pay attention to here on the daily time frame. And if we were to break back below around 3,000, in that case, the next major support is sitting closer towards around 2.8K to maybe 2850 based on the these local lows. And right now, obviously, the price of ETH is continuing that perfect rejection from my exact area of resistance that I warned about here on the channel since basically all the way back down here since before we saw the rejection. And that's sitting in between around 34.30 to 35.60 approximately. So for now, that is still acting as major resistance. And if it's zooming into the shorter term, looking at the two hour time frame, obviously, I mentioned in my last video here on the channel, we're possibly forming a head and shoulders pattern, which is a bearish pattern in the short term for Ethereum. So I said, if we can confirm a break below around 3150, give or take below this line of support, then that would be a bearish signal for Ethereum, likely resulting in a continued drop in the short term. And so far, we've seen exactly that as expected, but we still technically have not actually hit the technical price target for this pattern right here, which the technical price target, in case you missed my last video, is sitting at around 2930. So just above 2.9K or just underneath $3,000. But even though that's a technical price target at underneath $3,000, we cannot ignore support because obviously support is still important and where the price could likely bounce at. So once again, we have support at close to $3,000 and just above $3,000, which so far we're starting to bounce at just above $3,000. So keep that in mind. We cannot ignore support, even though we have a technical price target down here, it's still possible. And right now we are seeing the price actually bounce from this support at close to $3,000 and just above 3,000. And so personally, if I were to take this trade right here, which by the way, I did not short Ethereum personally, I'm not really looking for short positions considering we're in a larger bullish market. I'm mainly looking for long positions. But with that being said, if I took this short position right here to trade this move to the downside around key levels of support, those are the areas where I'd potentially look to take some profits out of a short position, just like how if I'm in a long position around some key levels of resistance, those are potential points where I'd look 
look to take some profits out of a long position around resistance. And so by doing that, if I take a bit of profits off the table, for example, in a trade like this around support, if the price, for example, does not go all the way to the price target, and instead we just bounce right here and bounce all the way back up, obviously you've already taken some profits close to support. And also if you move your stop loss a basically below your entry in the case of a short position that would be into profits then in the worst case scenario you'll still profit from the trade if the price comes back up and hits your stop loss in profits and in case you're wondering the point of invalidation for this pattern right here would be a breakout back above this neckline which is sitting at around 3150 to 3160 so if we see a breakout back above that level on the chart with candle closes above that level that would invalidate this whole break to the downside here and invalidate this price target and this pattern. So keep that in mind. If we see a breakout back above that level, then we're basically no longer heading to that price target because it would be invalidated. But for now, while the price is still below around 31.50, technically speaking, we still have this active price target, which is in play right now, but we cannot ignore support once again. And with that being said, if we're taking a look at Solana on the daily time frame, right now the price of Solana is still holding above this previous area of resistance, now acting as new support sitting in between around $200 to $210. So once again, around that area is where there's a lot of buyers interested in buying Solana. That is what basically support is in case you're new to all of this. So right now we're still holding above that area, which is good news for the price of Solana, because if we were to break back below around $200 with candle closes back below $200, at least in the short term, as in for the next few days, maybe for the next week or so, if we saw that signal, obviously that would be a short term bearish signal, potentially pointing towards a drop down towards the next area of support sitting in between 183 to 187. But obviously for now, we're still finding support in this range in between 200 to 210, which is still good news. But of course, just in the shorter term here for the last few days, we have seen a bit of a cool off, basically a slight pullback and some choppy sideways price action, just cooling off during the bull market because when we're looking at the larger price structure here we're still forming significant higher lows and higher highs which is larger bullish price structure and especially if we're zooming out looking at the weekly time frame right now things are looking very very bullish right now in terms of the price structure it's clear that we're in a bull market right now looking at the bigger picture despite little short-term pullbacks that we see along the way which is very normal to see even during a larger bull market and the next significant area of resistance to the upside on the weekly time frame here is at around 250 to 260 based on the current all-time high this previous bull market top for the price of Solana and obviously if we break out above 260 we'll be heading into new all-time highs which would be extremely bullish but before then we should find a decent amount of resistance at around 250 to 260 and once again just in the short term maybe for another couple of days we're likely going to see a bit of a slowdown here but still finding support in this range likely just going to basically hover above this support for a likely scenario here in the short term. And once again, if you want to trade these moves to maximize your profits in crypto, check out those links down below this video to claim those extra bonuses. And if you want to actually know how to profit from crypto, no matter if the price is bullish, bearish, or chopping around sideways, then make sure to watch these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can profit from bullish or bearish price action using long positions or short positions. And the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.